Hey, Digital Podcaster fam. So this is part one of three of a continuing theme I'm going with called uh, Profitable Podcasting Foundations. And this is taken from a talk that I did with a private group that asked me to come and speak. And they are business owners. Some of them already have existing podcasts. Some of them are high-level marketers that have been doing this for a while. And it is a fire hose of information. Essentially, what I did during this talk is just distill down over the past 10 plus years what I'm seeing, what's working, some best practices across the board. And I wanted to split this up because there is so much in this talk that I felt like if I just lumped it into one thing, it would kind of get lost. So I'm splitting it up into three. This is part one of three. I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned for the future episodes coming out. Let's dive in. This is the show for creative entrepreneurs who have a message to share and want to live a life of freedom. Learn how to grow your network and net worth. Hear from exciting guests and more. My name is Dylan Schmidt and welcome to Digital Podcaster. So profitable podcasting. If you're not sold on the idea of podcasts, hopefully this sells you. So they are an intimate experience for both the host and the listener, something you don't get anywhere else. We live in a short form video world where everything is seven to 15 seconds is like what we're seeing perform best for videos on social media. That doesn't give you a lot of time to build a real connection. If you're a heavy social media user, like most of us are, you get notifications all the time. You get, there's so much interruption happening. So podcasts give you more time for sharing an idea, like a big idea that you have. And of course, adding more value and having a conversation. Most people don't see podcasts as a two-way street. But it really is. It's you speaking to your listener or you speaking with the guest and your listener and taking into consideration the listener is there and aware is huge because they feel like they're a part of the conversation. And when you include them in that, it goes a long ways. And it's great for expanding your network by featuring other guests and experts. So personally, I'm I'm pretty introverted. I don't even really like going to the grocery store. I'll be honest. Too, too bright, too much going on sales. I don't know. I just like, just not a fan of the grocery store. Networking events. Eh. If someone's like holding my hand, I don't know. I don't know. I've not my thing, but I have found podcasts have been the ultimate networking hack because there's a common thread instead of being like, Hey Heather, we should connect over a coffee sometime. If nowadays I can easily see, Oh, Heather does this. Oh, I can make a quick pitch to have Heather on my podcast and we can have a conversation not only are we connecting, but I'm adding value to Heather by uh, pulling out her expertise and she's creating content effortlessly while on my podcast that she can then use. I'm adding value for my own content creation and my own podcast and the listener is getting value listening in. So there's three points of value being added amongst, amongst the people involved in a podcast interview. What's, and I'm going to talk more about that on some of the benefits for your guests and how to do that. We're going to cover a lot. But yeah, it's just been an absolute dream for networking. I reach out and I book guests easily and I have different processes. Oh, not different. I have the same process across the board, but I'll reach out to them on different networks. And my success rate is really high with securing guests. Even if they even if they have no idea who I am, it's not like they come across my page and they're like, oh, you had so-and-so on. I guess I'll come on. No, like they don't even have to look at my page because the success rate of my pitch is so high. And I come across pitches all the time from other podcasters and like I instantly archive them. I instantly delete them. And it's, this was before I was even started digital podcaster and was teaching people about podcasts. I've been pitched so many times. I was able to create an effortless pitch that doesn't feel like pitching. I just, I didn't even like calling it a pitch until like about a week ago. I just like calling it an invitation. Pitch seems like I'm, it's just like I'm extending the invitation and podcasts are super versatile. So you don't even have to record a podcast. You could just repurpose content. Like I could repurpose this talk, say like all things considered, you have permission from where you're recording it, but say it was your own workshop or your own Instagram live or your own Facebook live, whatever it is, you can easily repurpose that content for a podcast. So it doesn't need to be only recorded for the podcast, which I absolutely love. Some of the most valuable podcasts I feel like I listen to aren't recorded for a podcast. They're just a workshop or some other conversation taking place and then uploaded as a podcast. 
And I don't feel like, oh, that doesn't count. No, it, it counts as a podcast. It's a podcast. For example, you're probably familiar with, and he's a polarizing individual, I get it, but Gary Vaynerchuk, a popular marketer, digital marketer, he does these things called four Ds. I forget what the Ds stand for, but he. it's been a couple of years since I, I know the exact cost, up-to-date things, but at least a couple of years ago, it was like $10,000 and you get a couple different things with him and you can fly to New York and and get an hour with Gary in a group coaching session. And so these people pay, say, $10,000 to do this. He's recording it as well, answering these questions. Everyone gets five minutes or less a question with Gary. And he uploads that as a podcast and a YouTube video. And he's repurposing this content everywhere. And he'll do little clips of that and upload it as a podcast. And I find those really valuable. And you're like, huh, this is something people pay $10,000 for. And here I am listening to it for free. And you could charge for podcasts as well, too. But majority of the time, thinking them as free is just a little bit easier, especially in the context of the discussion moving forward during this time. Most of the time, you're going to be thinking podcast is free. They lead to other things that could be paid. And how are podcasts different than Instagram, TikTok, Instagram again? Wow, Instagram got on there twice. Twitter, I had YouTube on there, but then I was like, oh, take that off. So Instagram got twice, Instagram squared. So podcasts aren't social media. There's not a comment section under podcasts. Yes, if you had your podcast on your website, there could be a comment section, but it's not really a social hangout. It is more of a, like I said, an intimate experience between you and the listener. And how I like to look at this is social media is like interruption marketing. No one goes on to, you can try, but no one goes on Instagram and is like, I'm going to pull the way this specific piece of information to go about my day. I don't know. Personally, if I go on Instagram trying to get one piece of information, I start scrolling. I start like going down rabbit holes and then I close the app and I go, oh my gosh, I was, I went on there to do this one thing. And now I'm like, how, where did I end up? It's because it is interrupting the patterns that you (laughs) went there for. Like, it's all about, look at this, look at that list, look at this. And that is way different than podcasts. Podcasts aren't about interrupting your daily pattern. Podcast listeners fit your podcast into their daily pattern. So how I like to, I'll use myself as an example. If I go to the gym, some days I might listen to music. Some days I'm going to listen to a podcast. If it's a really deep philosophical thing that I need to give more attention to, I'm probably not going to listen to that while I am lifting heavy weights and could, I need to be really present for it so I don't hurt myself. But I might listen to a comedy podcast or something where I could not have to hear everything that's said. And I'm not going to feel like I'm missing out on the conversation. And same goes for driving. Like people have their driving podcasts, their commute podcasts, their cleaning podcasts, like different things at different parts of their day that they rely on that. The good news about podcast listeners is that they are great at finishing stuff. Most podcast listeners, and I guess I'm a minimalist here. I should have a slide for that. But there is there is a high number. I forget what the exact percentage is. It's somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of podcast listeners finish the podcast episodes they start. So rarely does someone start something and then not finish it, which is so different than social media. How many times it's get to the point, if we're talking about Instagram, you can't even TikTok too. You can't even scroll through like reels and certain videos. You have, it's either like you get the point and you scroll or you just don't get the point at all and you keep scrolling. Podcast listeners are way different. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's a length thing. That doesn't mean that podcast episodes need to be long or short. We're going to talk all about that. But there are that. Yeah, that's the main differences between podcasts and social media. So something around podcasts I want to talk about is time, expectations and energy. So starting with time and expectations, and this kind of goes into what best practices across the board I see with podcasts. And I know this might feel like it's going a little fast, but again, we're going to cover everything. So anything that is missed, I promise you we'll cover it. So Best practices across the board, and I don't watch Netflix. I don't watch hardly anything. All I do, I just eat, sleep, podcasts, and across the board, this is what I see, best practices. So ideal average solo podcast length, one person talking, and this is just, this isn't repurposed content. This is just one person talking. Average solo, a good solo podcast length is around 20 minutes. You go longer than that, and there's probably too much rambling or too much time to curve back around or trying to cram too many ideas into one solo episode. And this gives enough time to really hash out something. That means that doesn't mean it, it can't go longer or it can be shorter. It can. But ideal episode length, I would say, for a solo podcast is around 20 minutes. 
Sometimes if it's too short, I would say five minutes or less, you're going to find people having it a hard time fitting it into their pattern because it's so fast. And you can, if you set up that expectation, Ryan Holiday of the Daily Stoic has a super short podcast that he releases frequently. So it can be done, but a lot of people just really crave a deeper dive into that. If you're doing an interview style podcast, typically around 45 minutes, not to say it can't go for three hours, totally could. Not to say it couldn't be 20 minutes, totally could as well. But I like around 45 minutes is good. And again, because, and this goes back to, excuse me, what you set expectations up from the very beginning. If someone, if you are always doing five minute podcasts and then you just release like a three hour podcast, people aren't going to be as warmed up to that idea as if you are, if you keep it around something like expectations. And it's not just setting expectations at the beginning of an episode saying, hey, today's a three hour episode. That's not really... People become habitual with their podcast input. So sticking to regular type of patterns in your podcast are really helpful as a listener, knowing what to expect. Because and, and it's easier to, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. But I say ideal interview style podcast length is around 45 minutes because also that's another thing too, is just being mindful of the listener. A lot of times podcasters, people who are doing the content will, it gets a little self-indulgent. Okay, we get like, we get this person is so amazing and it's like, now let's go to this stuff. Let's go to the helpful stuff. I don't need a 15 minute intro on Heather. I'll know. I don't, I just want to hear Heather at this point. You know, like I don't want to, I don't need, you don't have to sell me on Heather. I'm sold by the episode title, which is what we'll talk about too. And if listeners expect a deep dive into a subject and that looks like is 20 minutes is a deep dive. 45 minutes is also a deep dive because what it all comes back to the listener and what they expect, but also what they're getting from the podcast. And oftentimes it looks different for each listener. Some listeners will just like the banter. They come to your podcast for the small talk. Some pod- podcast listeners will come for specific things like education. So across the board, most of the time listeners are expect to be educated and entertained. The entertainment part I've found trips people up a lot because they think that looks like having like flashy little segments or they need to reinvent the wheel. Entertain, from what I see or hear, is entertainment really comes down to just being applicable and interesting by your audience. And you do that by understanding your audience well and understanding what they enjoy listening to. It's not necessarily having some type of game show involved in it or having to build yourself up to be this person. Some of the best podcasts I've listened to have a monotone voice and he sounds like he's, you could just about fall asleep. People like myself would see that as entertaining. All you really need to record a great podcast is a big idea and a microphone. That's something I love about podcasts. Russell Brunson of ClickFunnels. I find him to be a very interesting case study of podcasts because he has been podcasting for years. He credits it as one of his biggest channels for marketing and gathering new clients millions of dollars in sales. I listen to his podcast occasionally. And one of the things I heard him say, like podcasting has been the biggest contributor to his marketing success. And I thought that was interesting because he's eats, sleeps and breathes marketing. But what I find fascinating about him and I like studying him because he started a podcast just driving to work in his car with no special equipment. He, I forget what the podcast was called, but it was podcast in a car, marketing, something in a car. And even still to today, he records a podcast on the go. I don't know the exact what he uses. I'm pretty sure he just uses like a very simple setup, maybe just his voice memos on his phone. But listening to his podcast, he'll record while he's driving and he'll even say, I'm safe, everybody, it's safe. Probably has an autopilot Tesla or something. And he, you'll hear the turn signals. You'll hear like stuff happening in the background. So... It's really easy to get caught up in the, I need the perfect microphone. I needed this. I needed that. And even for myself, like I I went to school for audio engineering and and I'm fully aware of the gear and the toys and stuff. Like I I get that. But at the end of the day, all you really need is a big idea to share with your audience. Nobody knows. Like I, I know as good as anyone, like should be able to tell what kind of microphone he's using. And I can't totally tell if it's just his iPhone voice memos or if it's like a $300 microphone he has on a camera or something, or if it's just the air ear pods that, or AirPods that came with the phone, the wired one. So all that to say, the gear doesn't really matter. The message matters the most. 
And when making content for your podcast, your energy goes much further than any type of content creation. So what I love about this is personally, my spirit animal is a sloth. And I love like I'm super productive and all that stuff. But I feel like I do that because I want to make it as easy as possible on myself to not work harder. And to some people that looks like working a lot. But really, I I get a lot done by doing by working smarter, not harder. And podcasts are the ultimate way of working smarter, not harder. And I'll break that down. So like a one hour podcast, what you could produce and, and I would say this is what you could expect to produce, not like these results are not typical or anything like that. Like these results should be typical unless you have 59 minutes of just dead air. Nothing's being said. If you have an hour of audio recorded, even if it's repurposed content from somewhere, this is what you should expect to get. Obviously, you should at least get one podcast if it's a one hour podcast, but you should also be able to get four to seven, at least four to seven video clips that you can use for social media. That's like Instagram. TikTok, anywhere that you can upload video. YouTube Shorts is great. You can also make YouTube clips from this as well. And I know oftentimes people will ask, do I need a separate YouTube channel? If you are wondering that, we could talk about that later too. But you should be able to get at least four to seven. And I put four to seven, it's really seven plus is video clips for social media. You should also then be able to get four to seven plus images and tweets that you can use like quote cards and different things like that. And then one to two newsletters. Typically, you'll find that you could do one newsletter just around the episode and then another newsletter around just using the content. And again, like there should be a plus next to the two because you could really do a blog or a newsletter from a video clip and an image. So I don't want to make it too confusing or too overwhelming at the same time too, because that is one of the things that podcasters run into is you almost get an overwhelming number of content. And then you're like, I'm not utilizing all of the content I should be. And that's a common thing, but at least you have the content and that doesn't really go out of style unless it is based around like a news event happening that day. Then yeah, obviously you can't repurpose it. But most of the time, this is just content that can be repurposed. It doesn't necessarily need to be done on that day or week. Like you could leave out certain things as you repurpose a content into a newsletter, for example, or social media videos. So what do you need to podcast? I know I said you really just need a microphone and a great idea, but there is some additional gear that, that you do really need is a microphone, uh, a camera, which is optional. But since when we talked about how you would repurpose the content, it just makes life easier when you have a camera. The good thing about cameras for podcasts is, and just in these days in general, people are really forgiving of camera quality, zoom quality. We're used to that people like I'm guilty of exploring all of the different apps and things like that. But at the end of the day for my own podcast, I just use zoom because it works all the time. There's certain, there's companies out there that market gear and apps and things like that to podcasters, but they don't have billions of dollars in their business like zoom does. And I've had trouble with them. I've had clients that have trouble with them. So I just, at the end of the day, I just trust what works. And that's always been Zoom. I've never had an issue with Zoom. And if it's good enough for Tony Robbins, it's good enough for me. And then you need an editor and not necessarily like an editor you outsource like an actual person, although it could be, but a simply a way to edit the audio. There's a lot of apps and cool things out there. The main one that I love, the editing service itself, like there's no secret. This is something I guess I wish someone had told me very early on, way before podcasts, like when I was learning audio engineering and all that stuff. There's no like button that makes a podcast one popular or two sound professional and all that. There's no secret like way to editing a podcast that then somehow converts to more listeners. No, it's all about the idea at the end of the day. And that's like Russell Brunson, for example. It's not like he has an editor go back through his thing and edit out certain words that then make it perform better. No, it's just the authenticity that's shared through the message. Although you do need, you don't want to have a gap of audio in the beginning where it's like, hey, this took two minutes to start. So that's why I say an editor of could be GarageBand that comes for free on every Apple computer or Audacity. That's a free editor for Windows and Mac. Something super simple is all you need. And then a hosting service. So how a podcast goes from Like this, if we were starting from scratch and we were all on this call starting our own podcast together, I would take the recording, edit it, and then upload it to a hosting service. My favorite one that I use and recommend is called Buzzsprout. 
but they all do the same thing. They all do the same thing. So Buzzsprout is what I use and recommend. And what that does is at its simplest version, you upload the audio to a hosting service like Buzzsprout. And then Buzzsprout publishes that to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, all the different ways that someone listens to a podcast. Buzzsprout does that automatically. And they're really low cost these days, which is awesome. It used to be expensive. These days, it's maybe 18 bucks for a couple hours of audio a month. And there are free options out there like Anchor, which is a Spotify, a part of Spotify. But it, I just, I recommend Buzzsprout for a couple extra features. And especially if it's something, if we're talking profitable podcasting, I always feel like trying to only use free services, you know, using the right free service. Using GarageBand as a free service is great. It's just editing the audio. But Buzzsprout, I like the functionality. And if there's any issues... They've always been great. And that's it. That's all. Like a hosting service. Once you set that up the first time and it walks you through very user friendly. Once you set it up the first time, anytime you want to upload audio, it will automatically, you just drag and drop it almost like you're putting a file in Google Drive and it will put it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that stuff. And it just walks you through title of the episode, summary, that type of thing, which is really cool. I hope you enjoyed part one of this three-part series. In the next episode, we're going to go even deeper on this. So thank you so much for listening. If there's any part of the episode that stood out to you, I would love if you could send me a message on which part that was. If you had a groundbreaking aha moment, would be super curious to know. So please share that with me. Other than that, I'll see you in the next episode for part two.